Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, and welcome to our latest presentation in our mobile mapping essential series. Uh, today we have um, some colleagues and friends from Horus who are going to talk to us about um, an additional camera solution for our mobile mapping uh, systems. Uh, so welcome to um, Baz Bokas and Dirk Albers from Horus who are going to present the solution to us. Um, we had some requests over the last period of time about adding cameras and other sensors as well actually to um, the MX-7 and the MX-9 uh, mobile mapping system and Horus provides um, this possibility by connecting uh, the Horus framework technology to TMI, the Trimble mobile mapping field software. Um, so in the first steps, we are have been working with Horus and Horus will be offering a high resolution camera kit that can be connected to an MX-7 or an MX-9 in the field and with a workflow that's compatible with the Trimble mobile mapping workflows. Um, so I'm going to hand over now to our friends from Horus but just to say also, we will take questions at the end, but the way we'll handle questions is if you could please type them into the questions box, please just do this as we go through, and then we'll have a kind of 15 minute session at the end where we can go through the questions uh, and answer any questions that have popped up. Uh, so with that, I'll hand over to Buzz, first of all. Hey, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good morning. Uh, my name is Buzz. In the upcoming five minutes, I will give you some background information about the company Horus. And from there, I will hand over to my colleague, Dirk, and he will give you an in-depth um, demonstration of the HR solution. Uh, but first of all, I would like to introduce our company and also the framework where we, uh, what the basics are for our framework. So this, next slide please. So Horus uh, is a company, it's based in the Netherlands. Um, we um, are founded in 2008 and we have a very strong background in the mobile market uh, ever since. And we were global from uh, actually from Indonesia uh, all the way up to Brazil and also in, in Europe and in EMEA we have a, a very strong background. And what we do is we focus on uh, capturing video-based situational awareness solutions. And this means, uh, for example, surveillance applications for police departments, but also capturing street level imagery for the mobile mapping industry. Um, next slide, please, Dirk. So what we see now, we see a couple of trends, especially in the geospatial market, is uh, what we see nowadays is that our clients want to have a better and real-time understanding of the remote environment. And this sometimes to create um, smarter and safer workplaces. So the good news is, is that technology improves uh, every day and becomes more powerful uh, to support this. Uh, GPUs are getting more powerful. I'm not sure if you're following, for example, the NVIDIA conference, and they have uh, some really exciting new stuff and new hardware uh, pronounced. So yeah, uh, that's good news. But also AI libraries for companies like Brain Creators uh, are getting better and allowing object recognition and blurring, etc. And of course, the upcoming 5G connections uh, supplying very high bandwidth, and that allows us uh, for edge and cloud computing. So the mobile mapping is responding to this and asking for smarter ways of uh, capturing street level imagery as well. For example, uh, the demand of high-res imagery um, for AI purposes, that's what we in for today, but also the, uh, the, challenge, the challenge of combining technologies like uh, adding a thermal imagery, GPR data, um, but also to stitch and stream this immediately, for example, to a virtual control room. 
But on the other hand, if you uh, combine these um, these cutting edge technologies, that a lot, yeah, the cost normally uh, a long of R and D process. And uh, at the other hand, the competitors are uh, also in in the market and would like to do the same. So uh, the big advantage is, uh, well, you should use actually the Horus framework. And the Horus framework, Dirk, could you please go to the next slide? Is um that we use the inside framework to make that happen so uh, our question today is that we believe we can boost the uh, mix sales uh, by making the system a little bit smarter and more versatile but also on the other hand this uh, must be well in, in a very short time to market to stay ahead of our competitors but also to give an uh, answer to the questions that we got from the market the, our, the market is demanding for hr imagery so that's the reason why this is our first step uh, is creating the HR extension. The next slide, please, Derek. So actually, what does the uh, the framework and uh, what's the reason that we can um, well deploy such a well extension in such a short a short time? Is that our framework is built uh, as a sort of a drag and drop solution. This means the framework that's a sort of a software platform with a library full of components. In the components, you can uh, drag and drop and build your own pipelines. For example, there is an, uh, a data grabber that can uh, grab HR data, for example. And um, that's uh, what, well, that's a big advantage of using our system. So we have pre-configured pipelines. You can include your own code blocks, um, use uh, the AI libraries from third parties, but the most important thing is that uh, we shortened uh, actually the product development time. Uh, well, it says almost a half of the time, but sometimes uh, what uh, other companies takes, for example, three months, we can do this in 15 minutes. Uh, we proved this by one of the companies called Flare. Uh, we created an IR solution. They said, okay, that will cost you three months, and we did it in 15 minutes. So this uh, shows the power of actually of the Horus Insights framework. So for today is that we use the Horus Insight Framework to build the HR solution. And I would like to hand over to Dirk and he will tell you all about this. So thanks for your attention. So if you have any questions about the company Horus, please come back to me. You can um, put them in a the question uh, bar and we will answer them after the presentation. So Dirk, please go ahead. Yep, thanks Vash. <clears throat> Let's dive into this uh, extension, and uh, we call this uh, the MX Plus. Uh, the challenge, as Boss mentioned, was uh, how can we add more value to these existing products? Uh, since we've seen that people that are working with these products sometimes get requests from clients, hey, you're in the field, why don't you can collect other kind of data, maybe with higher uh, requirements? or uh, with other kinds of applications. And therefore, uh, we took this as uh, the challenge to show that it is uh, possible to add this value. So this was the original idea. Okay, if you combine these products like MX7, MX9, uh, they already collect a very good uh, uh, location and information, uh, have other sensors to do uh, precise measurements. Why don't we connect this with the Hortus framework and add the other things Boss already mentioned, like high resolution thermal infrared, for example, to detect uh, temperature differences, especially for utility companies, very interesting if you already have these kind of solutions to measure objects or assets, um, temperature difference might inform you about uh, upcoming failures of equipment. That is just one example of adding an extra sensor to this um, uh, kind of solution. Um, when we talked with Trimble about this, we said, okay, we should focus first on the low hanging fruit because there is a market need of higher resolution on the imagery part. And yes, of course, there are upcoming uh, requests with other sensors and that is also what we might uh, do and add in the future. So we started with the high resolution part and why was that? Um, we saw that there were, um, well, mainly three kind of use cases that uh, the market is uh, requesting. And I'll dive in this presentation in some examples of uh, what we did with this extension. Um, but let me first dive into uh, the part of what is then the product, what is the extension? 
extension is a combination of three cameras that can be mounted on um, an MX-9 or an MX-7. Uh, so the whole kit comes with um, the mounting um, uh, accessories. Um, this are, uh, these are um, high resolution cameras, uh, 8.9 megapixel each with a 12.5 millimeter lens. Over the last years, we have a lot of uh, experience with applying this kind of setup for use cases like road inspection, um, reading detail information, inspection quality of uh, assets. Uh, and uh, recently there was some nice improvement also in the 3D mesh. So. If we look at how this is connected, um, the only thing that needs to be connected to the MX-7 or MX-9 is just one cable. It's a communication cable where the trigger and uh, NMEA data comes uh, through. And the cameras are connected each with a cable for the data and one for the trigger. It's connected to the recording unit. Um, and this is a, a Horus box that listens to the operator of the MX product. So if the operator starts a new mission or a run, uh, the horror software listens to it and starts uh, likewise. And yes, there is also a screen attached to the system. So if you want to make some additional configuration to the uh, uh, extension, you can do that. And important is that this um, whole extension need to be powered by a separate battery. And over here you can see that uh, uh, if you have a, a, a battery in your car, an extra battery, um, and you can calculate how many hours you can drive. Um, and this is designed also for uh, well, capturing uh, eight hours a day, for example. If we have a look at the workflow, then we try to look at the workflow and leave everything uh, as it is. Like uh, if you have the workflow that the MX-9 itself records data like the panoramic images, the PGR files, the planar images, uh, the LiDAR data, and your GPS uh, data. And then the data after recording is post-processed with uh, Planix POSPAC. Uh, there is one template added to POSPAC where you can export also your positional information. And on the Horizon extension, the data is collected as HRS uh, data, that's our own format. Um, and with the position fixer, the, both uh, the trajectory file and the imagery file can be nicely combined. Uh, there is that initial stitching, so dependent on where you mount your um, high resolution extension, that can be in front of, for example, the MX-9, but others like to mount it uh, on the back of uh, the MX-9. And with the MX-7, you can mount it very close to the uh, ladybug itself. Um, so once you combined the data, uh, with the position fixer, you're free to choose which program you want to use the data. You can export the data to single JPEG with metadata, for example, to upload this in uh, Trimble TMX. Um, there is a way to work directly with Horus software um, that you have the tools with the high resolution only. And there are some combinations. If you want to combine the data, you can merge the data like the, the PGR, the, panoramic data that comes from uh, the MX-9 or MX-7. And you can work with that together in the Horus software. Uh, Horus software is called Horus Geo Suite. And we know that there are a couple of clients uh, that also um, are working with uh, Topodot software. So it means if there is the market need, we can also make that export and that you can reuse the imagery data uh, within that software too. Really would like to uh, here from the market what is uh, what is needed. If we look at the data sheet, um, well, already mentioned a couple of things. Uh, these are 8.9 megapixel cameras each. Uh, it's a global shutter, uh, specific, uh, pretty important if you drive uh, fast. We have a lot of clients that drive on highways, so uh, the imagery quality should be good for those uh, use cases as well. Uh, the whole unit weights uh, 3.2 uh, kilogram. Um, and when you look at the data size that's being collected, well, if you record every three meter, uh, it's 2.44 gigabyte, and that is uh, almost the same as one LiDAR uh, unit. Um, 
So let us dive a bit deeper into the demo data. Uh, what we did, for example, we made a, a collection of demo data that is also uh, available. I'll uh, explain later on. Um, we made uh, several setups because we want to give end users the freedom to decide where to focus the resolution. What is the area of interest? So for one approach, it could be focus the three cameras in front of the car, in front of the road. Others want to uh, mount this on the back of this system to focus maybe on the road uh, at the back of the car. And for points of interest situations, you can also decide to uh, focus your cameras, uh, left and right camera more to the left and right uh, towards maybe shops or the utilities. And for the demo purpose, we also made a 45 degrees uh, setup that you can see the differences, what you can achieve with these uh, camera positions. Uh, important to understand that high resolution imagery is um, mainly uh, used to add that high resolution information uh, to see context uh, information of objects. So it's not the first design to create a very nice combination with a point cloud. Uh, it's a kind of addition to see other information besides the thing you already can with, for example, the MX products. Let me dive a bit deeper into these examples, like the road inspection. Um, I think we have, as a company, a pretty long history of collecting and helping others to collect high resolution imagery for road inspection. Um, and especially the countries that uh, do a lot with visual road inspection, and you have the traditional approaches like sending people um, uh, along the streets and do inspections with paper and maybe some digital uh, kind of devices, uh, pretty dangerous. Uh, so there was a very strong demand in the market. Okay, can't we make this safer and more digital? So therefore we introduced high resolution cameras that even driving 100 kilometers an hour can capture the information of the roads. And as a background, we're our office is located in the Netherlands. The Netherlands has a very strong history about using an open asphalt structure. That means um, they have uh, damages uh, a lot about the raveling. That means the tiny little stones are missing. And when that process is starting, it's degradating pretty fast. So it's a very important to understand at the early stage how um, what is the severity of uh, the damages that you can see out there? Um, if you know that in early stage, you can prepare the maintenance programs and that saves a lot of money. Um, I'll explain a bit more in detail and uh, therefore I shift towards this um, high resolution camera setup. As you can see, um, I'm looking uh, in a kind of uh, three camera setup and we made a, a blend between the cameras. Um, so um, I play this video, but on disk, there is original data uh, as one single image already available as well. So just for the presentation, um, within the Horus software, we made this kind of uh, blend. And it's for a user uh, a nice way to do the inspection. So in the last years, we implemented functionality that you can see the tiny details in the road and to provide inspectors uh, functionality to draw, for example, um, their observations and not only click this in the video, but also create directly their uh, attribute information, maybe some uh, um, a snapshot of it. And it directly creates a geometry on the map. Um, implemented is also uh, getting the size dimensions of it on the flat surface. And this was a very uh, fast um, step forward for these kind of inspectors. They still had the knowledge about what is good and what is bad, uh, and they can do their work pretty safely in the office. So the collection part doesn't disturb the, the other traffic. They got the digital tools um, to do this. But this is not where it ended because it is still a lot of manual work for the inspector to um, enter his uh, observations. So therefore, we introduced also some other functionality to export this imagery 
to GeoTIFFs. And that is the process that I would like to demonstrate over here. So we made a function to select a certain area of your screen. And uh, well, this can be changed um, depending on your use case. Um, and this could help us to extract this part of the image and export this to GeoTIFF. So I'm exporting single files to disk and each um, image will be cropped out and will be transformed. So if I look on disk, it generates these kind of TIFF files and it is a GeoTIFF. So it means that every corner of the, this picture has real world coordinates. And that means if I open this in GIS programs, um, they support directly uh, the referencing of those files on the right location. And as you can see, um, I can zoom in on the tiny details um, and do also the measurements of these objects directly. So this is a nice way of a reprojection of the same imagery. And it is especially uh, pretty interesting uh, what we've seen with AI companies that can run their models directly on top of these images. For example, to do the automatic feature extraction. Where is the road marking? Where are the cracks? Um, that kind of information and they get the code and it's almost for free. Um, so that is one example of what you can achieve with road inspection uh, quality if you talk about high resolution imagery. Then the other example about uh, the points of interest. Um, as you might be aware that your Ladybug camera can do pretty nice recordings of the, of the surrounding. But we had a lot of questions of companies that say, well, we are mapping uh, databases with all kinds of information of shop names. It's pretty hard to see those in every city at a, a larger distance. So therefore we added these uh, also within cities towards the buildings. I'll show you some examples later on. And you can imagine that for utility companies, it is the same kind of uh, request. Yeah, you can see some in your Ladybug data, uh, but if you want to read the utility signs, for example, this is uh, one of the water uh, management company um, uh, where they can read uh, where the equipment, the assets are out there. I'll show you those in this example. So over here, I have this uh, combination with the um, an MX-9, we mounted this extension in front of the MX-9. And you can see if I, I look to the right, you see the same position. So if I try to read this sign, it's not possible with a standard ladybug. But if I turn um, my other high resolution camera and open this, then it's possible to read it. So you can see same location and the other camera and it really helps you to enter that kind of information in a very safe way. And it also works for the shop names and so on. So if I look for example to the shop on the left or what is it, the bar, it's pretty hard to read the tiny details on the walls. And if I switch to the high resolution camera and even with the one with the neighbors, you can see in these days that they still try to do some business during COVID. Uh, and that is pretty hard to see in just that ladybug. So it, we, we discovered a couple of use cases like the points of interest. There are companies that would like to detect maybe opening hours, company names, but for utility companies, it's also important to see the tiny details and maybe also the condition of your assets uh, outside. And for example, there is the, the other one, if I go to the multi view where I have some pictures that I would like to share. So I 
I'm opening. It sleeps. I think my disk is a, a bit sleeping. But then I would like to show the combination of the HR and that was in the presentation as well. If I enlarge this, for example, uh, this is what the camera can see uh, in uh, in that recording. Um, might be important to read numbers, but also to see conditional information like the asphalt quality and what needs to be repaired and, uh, and what not. So that was the second part of um, a use case, what you can do with high resolution data. And the last one I would like to share today is also the way of creating a 3D mesh. Um, if you nowadays look what kind of software is available to create these nice 3D meshes um, that could help, uh, there are a lot of companies that use uh, drones, use uh, aerial pictures to create these models. But what we often hear is that the details that the users um, experience while walking on the street, they can never be captured by those uh, kind of uh, systems. So therefore we did um, together with Bentley a nice exercise to create this um, uh, meshes, the same data. Um, the same data you can see over here. Um, so this is created from the images only. So no LiDAR data was used to create this kind of 3D mesh, as you can see. Um, this uh, model was created from pictures and calculated a lot. And this is the result. And if you see that the same details that are in the data sets of the imagery can be seen um, to this as well. You see even uh, some height differences. And um, within this model, you also are able to do some measurements. So this might be a new approach to adding this high resolution imagery um, to um, create those digital twins and, and may help us also to uh, create this kind of environments uh, more realistic. And the power that nowadays is available to generate these models is, uh, is extremely uh, improving as well. Well, and as I mentioned, uh, we also prepared a kind of export that you can reuse your data in other programs like uh, TMX. Um, and dependent on the camera setup, you can make that combination that you are used to. Uh, as I mentioned before, imagery with this high resolution and the flexibility that we would like to offer is not designed to create and coloring the point clouds, but it is a very good addition to see the tiny details uh, in relation to the things you already can. So then I would like to dive a bit more in the product. So what is in the package? The whole system is a turnkey solution. So if you buy a system, it comes with the hardware, with a recording unit. The only thing you have to uh, take care of yourself is the battery and the extra battery in the car. It comes with the software. So you're free to create the configurations, to change from camera setups, to make exports uh, of the data or to directly use it in horror software. Uh, since we would like to support you, there is also the, the service level agreement possibility uh, that we uh, believe that this really adds value to you and your clients. And we would like to advise uh, you as the best we can. Okay, what about um, ordering? Um, the simple answer is please contact your local Trimble reseller. Uh, they are aware of uh, all kinds of demo data about the pricing. Uh, they're open to help you with this and we're in close connection with uh, uh, Trimble resellers to support them as well. So that brings me to the summary of today. Uh, we started with the idea about how can we add more value to existing products like the MX. Uh, we started with the high resolution extension and we showed you a couple of examples where we believe um, you can um, do some interesting business with this extension. Um, we really believe that the Horus framework is capable of doing much more than only the high resolution uh, extension. 
So maybe we will add more in the future. We're pretty open to hear also your ideas about this and uh, this HR extension will be sold by uh, the Trimble sales network. Um, I think we're at a part of uh, answering some questions. Um, and I think it's also good to redirect you to, and this will be shared afterwards, I believe, also for some extra information, how you can order these uh, extensions. If you need more support, please let us know. Um, Bas, can you help me with? Yes, I see a couple of questions coming in, but they're already answered. But I think I have a couple of questions for you as well, Dirk. So, for example, if you buy a system like the HR extension, how difficult is it to mount it, for example, on top of the car? And actually, how how does it work? Yeah, well, the, depending on if you're using an MX-7 or MX-9, it comes with the mounting uh, uh, accessories. Um, so, you, you first should think, okay, what is the best approach for you to mount it in front of the car or on the back of it? Um, connection because it's one single cable that's maybe the only uh, trick um, and you should think about your workflow how are you going to use the imagery are you going to export it to a certain tool do you need to have some additional configuration and with the quick start guide we help you with these steps and um, we also train the Trimble resellers uh, with uh, explaining the possibilities because we try to be flexible. We have a lot of uh, ways to go, and we would like to share also the experience we had with these kind of applications. Okay, thank you. There's another question coming in. Uh, can we combine 3D imagery from UAS application with the 3D mesh generated by the Hordes product to get a better detailed texture mesh? Um, well, actually, in the generation of the 3D mesh was, in this case, done by Bentley Software. So uh, I think that the guys at Bentley side can really inform you about those combinations. And we really believe also in this powerful combination, because from street level, you can collect those high resolution from the street level. And you would like to combine that with data acquired by other systems. I, I really understand your idea. But I have to redirect you to the guys that are specialists in the software, in this case, Bentley. Okay, other interesting question. Can this mobile system, um, be, uh, uh, can this mobile system be used on any small ship? So can it be mounted on a ship? Uh, yes. Um, uh, as long as you, um, uh, yeah, what is small? Uh, I'm just <laughs> thinking of the UAV uh, kind of things, but uh, hey, you have to take care of the weight and, and so on. Uh, yeah. But yes, we applied a spe specific for um, 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 on the kennels and, and having the, the quays inspected. That is a very good application example of what you can do with the high resolution imagery. Yeah, we have some, there's some examples of uh, certainly MX7s and MX9s on the Trimble website, actually in the Netherlands as well, where we they've been mounted on um, on uh, canal boats. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, since it's, it's a solution from the Netherlands, it should be good on water. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> so what's the weight of the system? Um, the cameras itself is 3.2 kilogram, so that is what you mount on uh, on the roof of your car. And uh, well, the unit is around uh, the whole package is around five kilogram. That is what you can store in your car. Okay. Um, is there a minimum FW compatibility for the MX7 units? Sorry, I couldn't, couldn't hear us. What is the minimum? Is there a minimum uh, F, FW compatibility for the MX7 units? I'm not sure what. Oh, yeah. that... it's, talking, it's talking about firmware, whether there's any kind of restrictions based on the firmware of the MX7. I believe the answer is no. No restriction. No. Okay. 
<laughs> so if you're using an MX-9, is there a way to elevate the camera system in a higher position so the car is not in the image? Um, yeah, it depends also how you would like to do. Um, for example, if you want to, uh, the further you mount the HR camera from the ladybug, uh, the harder it will be to combine images together. So maybe that is not your case. So then there is the configuration that with the lever arms, uh, mm. what you can configure in uh, OSPAC software, mm. that you give the Horus camera itself its own central point. And then, uh, well, you can place the cameras in front of your car, for example, that no car is uh, can be seen. Um, do, do, can you also use, um, if somebody was in, you, you talked about the configuration of, you know, maybe having them looking forwards or backwards. If I wanted to do both, is that a possibility as well? That is a possibility. So then you have to save uh, two separate configuration, uh, camera configuration files, software-wise. So that is just another um, export um, while you post-process your data. Okay, thank you. So that gives you the flexibility. Okay, um, other question, actually there are two. So how precise is the 3D mesh creation? Um, well, these are the, the first steps of uh, the creation of uh, this 3D. Um, it was in this case not tested on that kind of uh, um, uh, accuracy. It's a very good question. So uh, I'll uh, have a closer look at that. Okay. So are there things or places where the 3D meshes, uh, the 3D mesh creation has a little bit trouble, like crowded places? Yes, sorry, the, and, and the question is? Oh, the, the, the question actually is, um, hmm. is the 3D mesh creation has a little bit trouble, for example, like crowded places, so? Yeah, yeah, that is, uh, yes, of course, uh, the, the camera sees what, what is out there um yeah if there is the opportunity um uh, to do your data collection on the on the times that there are not that much people on the street that is uh, well uh, uh, advisable um uh and and i'm i'm not sure uh, currently how what is the status of removing automatically kind of things from the imagery part and because i've seen that there's also a lot of cleaning uh, in progress on the 3d mesh creation but i have to talk to the specialists what are the possibilities over there okay um do you have any developments specific to railway applications well the same technology um uh, can be applied on uh, railways, what we did also in the past. Um, the, the whole trick is if you can mount your MX-9, for example, uh, and I, I believe maybe Peter can add that, you have also clients that do that kind of data collection, isn't it? Yeah, we've done some, um, we have some customers that have collected data on railways with an MX-9, and in fact, we have a special, um, railway mounting kit for the mx9 that has a little bit kind of different um, shock absorbing uh, characteristics uh, compared with a vehicle or a car yeah yeah the only thing you have to be aware is uh what is the uh, the speed that the train uh, uh, will drive uh, there is uh we advise if you drive maximum of 90 kilometers an hour with the distance of each three meter, you can uh, collect very nice imagery. If it is faster, well, you, you need to have a closer look at what is then the, the orientation of your camera and uh, what in the end uh, do you need to capture each uh, uh, single meter. Um, so you have to be aware, a specific in the train environment, uh, what is the use case? Dirk, could you just say something about um, how, the, how the system operates, um, kind of how is the integration with the Trimble system, like what does the operator need to do to make the whole thing work? Yeah, well, the thing is, as long as he uh, connects the cable, 
um, we make use in this case of the uh, TMI API. So that runs on the Horus system it, and uh, therefore the Horus system listens to the signal that comes uh, from um, uh, the MX products. So um, the operator only has to do the same things as before as long as he convinces himself that the cable is connected and that the Horus system is turned on. Right, thank you. Yep. Okay, uh, other question, Dirk. Is there an optimal time of day to generate 3D meshes? And uh, particularly because in Arabics, time of day matters based on shadows. Is this product effective the same way? So what's the best time of day to create a uh, capture the imagery for the 3D meshes? Uh, it's a good question. As I uh, showed you in the examples, we had also sunlight coming from one direction. That is the, the real-time situation. So as you can see, this um, generation of 3D uh, also display shadow. And, and uh, I'm not sure if that's a virtual shadow. Um, I think uh, to give you a good answer on this, I have to talk also to guys, uh, in this case of uh, Bentley, that have a lot of uh, experience with this uh, 3D mesh creation. But um, I would think that, well, if you want to have a realistic uh, 3D mesh, then there will always be that kind of shadow sunlight uh, on it, as it is in real uh, life. And that is, well, real context capturing, isn't it? But I'll, mm -hmm. I'll check with the guys if there is a kind of optimum. Okay, uh, question, where will um, the high-risk imagery, uh, will this be stored internally in the MX-7 or is there a separate device needed? Uh, this will be stored on the Horus device. So it's a separate device. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a, a recording unit. Uh, that is a Windows uh, unit. So it will be stored uh, on that uh, drives on that disk. So it's not stored on the MX uh, system itself. We try to get uh, to leave the scope as clear as possible. Only the cable is the connection between the two systems. Okay. Thank you. Um, would the HR camera be capable to determine the species of trees by looking at the leaves? Do you have any experiences with this? Um, I think then I should pass this question to uh, those AI companies we yes. um, we work with. Um, it is it is always a kind of use case okay how is the data recorded in general and that is also the reason why the high resolution uh, imagery is this popular that ai companies uh, discover those self-learning patterns and really need better resolution nowadays uh, but to answer this specific question i think i should uh, get you in contact with one of the ai companies who work closely Okay, um, other question. Can the high risk cameras be pointed in any direction? Yeah, um, I, I have to think, well, uh, at, at least you would like to see um, the pixels on the target uh, uh, of the area of interest. Um, so if you mount this on a car, uh, yeah, well, of course, it makes sense that you would like to see something on the road and not the car itself. Uh, so you are free to, well, but and you have to, th yeah, the, 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 we designed this this mounting, huh? that, that that was why I am uh, was thinking about this. We designed this mounting to be flexible, to point the cameras to uh, above, uh, down. Um, so if you want to point three cameras uh, up front, uh, then know if that will make sense for that application. But you're pretty free to mount this within, uh, and, and please have a look at the, at the mounting of the cameras. Then you see what kind of configurations can be achieved by the rig that we supply with this kit. Perfect. I think this is the last question. Yeah, it is. Okay. 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 So, so, 
Uh, so thank you to Baz and Dirk, and uh, thank you to everybody who's taken the time to attend this session. Um, the session has been recorded and will be available on the Trimble website, let's say within the next 24 hours. Um, so if you have colleagues that missed and would like to watch this, then the recording will be available, as will be the PowerPoint slides themselves. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Thanks.